Hello everyone, my name is Oksana. It's Road to Edwards, weekly Edwards Insider, the 28th, who delivers the news about the creation of our project Edwards. So, Oksana, can you please start the session? Yes, thank you, Oksana. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Hiro Tokugawa. Now, uh, I am talking about uh, food, culinary arts in Edo, and uh, this is part two of Unagi Eel. Now, uh, are there any appetizing eel dishes in the Ukraine? No, you've never no, heard no, of it. No, no, no. <laughs> you've never heard of it, yeah. No. Uh, well, okay, so in Japan, it's a big thing. Uh, there's something in Britain, but I don't think I will ever try. Sorry, people from England. Uh, now, uh, all right, so this is part two of the eel, but uh, you see, in Japan, it is a delicacy, and it is actually delicious. I love eel, unagi, and, uh, but the thing is that uh, they are very difficult to catch. No, catching is one thing as fishing, but you think of, you have to cook them alive. So you have to grab it and then you nail the uh, head to a board. And then uh, you have to uh, split into half or you basically you, you open it like a book and then you grill it. So, uh, and then you have to be good at mixing the, uh, it's a mixture of sweet sake and uh, soy sauce and you grill it. It smells great and it tastes even better. And then you uh, put uh, what is the uh, spice, but uh, the spice. So, uh, but now each of the movements require uh, a real training. So basically uh, it's like three years uh, until you can cut the eel open. And then uh, five, five years in learning how to grill. So it takes, and something else as well. So it takes more than uh, 10 years to become a real professional eel cook or eel griller. Or, uh, well, unagi <laughs> shokunin. And uh, so that's it. Now, uh, you see, I, I think it's because teriyaki sandwich has, teriyaki has become uh, world famous and uh, there should be many a teriyaki sandwich as well. So uh, I think, the eel, the Japanese grilled eel, kabayaki, would make great sandwich material as well. But no Japanese has ever tried that yet, at least as far as I can tell, because they are so expensive. A good eel lunch could cost like uh, $50, uh, which in Japan is very expensive. I know in the United States, in the major cities, this is pretty ordinary. And uh, okay, and the way we consume eel is to put the eel on rice and then put the uh, sweet sauce on top. But uh, you see this unadon or unaju was born by accident uh, as the thing is that you want to deliver the eel uh, to whoever's who, who the uh, rich patron. So you will have to deliver it to his mansion. But for that, uh, you don't want the eel to cool, the uh, grilled eel to cool down. So what you do is you uh, get a box, a, a lunch box full of warm or hot rice. And then you put the eel on top with the sauce. And then someone after serving the, one of the servants probably, after serving the eel to the master, ate the rice with the sauce on top. And it turned out to be pretty uh, delicious. So, and that was the beginning. So this is sometime in the 18th century. And this is how we see uh, today's unaju. The origins, okay, and oh yes, and and the spice you put on eel, it turns out to be a Japanese pepper. Uh, in Japanese, it is sancho. So uh, if you visit Japan, uh, please give it a try, uh, and it's one of the better or one of the more more high ranking delicacies, and it has been that way uh, since its beginning, since its birth. Okay, so I think that is enough for this time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tokugawa. It's my your favorite dish as well. Oh, it's a sauce is like, like yeah. cherry on top. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have, have you ever tried it with on bread? Oh, with what? Uh, have, have you ever tried an unagi sandwich? No. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. Just, just the traditional way with rice. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe I should try to do make one. Okay. So. Oh, oh, oh I, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Also, uh, Jenny, could you please continue our session today? Yeah, thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'd like to update something about our gamify. So, uh, first of all, we would like to think of how we can maximize our value of lands for lands NFT holders because um, we are supported by them. 
And then we try to uh, find some solution for them to, you know, experience all my, all our, you know, land value is going to be up and better and improve, improving or something like that. And then finally, we came to conclude that uh, we are about to announce some kind of principles at the very beginning in Edivas, which is like a new, I, I think it is, which is like a new gaming. And then you, all of you can experience of how you can, it's a, like a puzzle game, like how you can move this land to get this square or blah, blah, something like that. I think uh, later on, uh, Dominic mentioned it in detail, but I think it's uh, good enough for you to enjoy our gaming platform. The other thing is uh, also we'd like to, you know, make the Edivas be a kind of platform for all of the gaming developers. So some of the famous IP approaching us, and we've discussed with them, and they are super interested in you know creating some new game. But uh, we don't have to be relying on you know kind of major IP because we are always open for all of the people. I mean individuals, of course, company, corporate, huge IP, small individuals. Anyone can be fair, and anyone can be you know uh, same level. I mean uh, equal. So uh, always we focus on kind of uh, like sandbox or Roblox or something. Because when you see some kids play uh, Roblox, they always, you know, find new new types of mini games, which is created by other young kids or young guy, and then they really enjoy that. And then sometimes the community member hits like 10,000 10, or 20,000, but two months later, 10, 20,000, no one plays uh, in that space anymore. So it, 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 that, that's why it's so, it's so exciting. I mean, uh, we are facing a new types of gaming application, which is created by any of the individuals, not like only huge company. So we, we would like to realize this, you know, gaming concept in Airbus. So I think the very beginning, we will provide some kind of examples, like, you know, a mini puzzle game or mini lands NFT game, avatar game, something like that. But after that, when, you, when, when you've seen uh, many types of examples, then you can create a lot of your idea you know, uh, to integrate your game uh, with uh, Airbus. So we would like to be like that. And then the final topic is, uh, I think we could have some nice uh, gaming guy who has a good experience of working for some uh, huge IP. And then uh, I, I'm going to talk to, you know, talk about San and Dominic and to other team, uh, whether we could have this guy as a, a, you know, gaming planner and producer. And then we will have a lot of knowledge from them and then we can learn uh, day by day. So that I think uh, not only Lance holder, uh, including Zeni holders, and in the future, Kovan holders, anyone can enjoy our gaming space. And then you are the you know, really good Edvas creator. You are the also creator with us. Yeah, thank you so much. That's enough from us. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jenny. And uh, also we have a uh, yes today with us. Please join us. Yeah, thank you, Oksana. So I would like to update mainly two points. First, uh, the currently the smart contract of Zeni token is under audited, so, so so that we can make our users to uh, trade trade Zeni and Kova in the future safely. And now. Uh, now we've already uh, submitted the audit professional audited audit firm to make the smart contract audit and now waiting for the audit report. The audit report will be provided in two or three days. So once provided the audit audit smart contract audit report, we are going to open the security audit report to all users. Of course, uh, in addition, the the, the existing smart contract will be audited as well in the future. However, now we are we are make we are uh, defining how the smart contract of the ecosystem works. So please stay tuned to our uh, smart contract process so that uh, we can make the uh, fascinating ecosystem. The second point is uh, second point is. Uh, currently, we are planning to make uh, to hold something like alpha or uh, the closed alpha or closed beta testing services before the before the official open openings of the X system. 
and this will be the uh, the joiner of closed alpha or closed beta tester will be the O0 holders. And of course, it will be rewarded as well. So details will be updated once, once the all, everything, once the everything ready to conduct the closed, closed testing services. So this is my update. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Diaz. And uh, Mitsushi, could you please uh, continue? OK, thanks, Oksana. Today, I'm going to talk about how we should frame or present the project. So recently, uh, the founder of Facebook, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uploaded a selfie in the metaverse. And a lot of critique happened. So yeah, currently Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, uploaded a picture of selfie in the metaverse uh, operated by the meta company. And the quality of that selfie was quite questionable. And a lot of people made a severe critique or criticism about it. And uh, we found, me and uh, TS found the patterns in successful dApps in crypto projects, which is enduring and waiting. Uh, a lot of people rushed to uh, rush to start aggressive marketing, rush to share uh, uncompleted materials. But that's not um, sort of strategic. We should wait until a high quality uh, end product is completed. Then after that, we should publicize it to the public and consumers. That's much better strategies. So a lot of like competitors make a press release announcement and those are disturbing factors or obstacles for us, but we should just wait, endure until the completed product is ready to launch. Then we should publicize it to public. That's a much better strategy. But I think meta corporations should have waited or endured just a little bit so that completed uh, metaverse uh, was completed. In, like, in case of metaverse, we already have a completed high quality visuals. So I think the critique which applied to um, meta company won't happen to us, but uh, sometimes waiting and enduring uh, rather than rushing to start marketing is uh, necessary. That's what we have learned these days from a lot of successful dApps and crypto related projects. So before moving, before rushing on to uh, consumer marketing, starting B2B marketing is I think great strategy or great mechanism. So we should appeal to our related corporations in the same industries before appealing to consumers. I think that's, um, much better strategies. Therefore, we will join, uh, you know, industry-oriented uh, expo, like uh, something which will happen in Dubai and London and Singapore. Joining those expos is a great strategy uh, rather than, uh, you know, publicizing projects to consumers uh, without having any uh, clear, consistent strategies. So I think we are going on the right direction right now. That's what I have learned from the incident with regards to critique on uh, Mark Zuckerberg selfie uh, in a matter. Other rather uh, dApps and crypto uh, projects also share incompleted, uncompleted materials, which cause a lot of critiques as well. So maybe we can say either this is a beta test or just uh, partially publicized projects to only uh, companies or uh, you know players in the uh, industry rather than uh, general consumers. So that's what I'm thinking right now. Of course, announcement about the ambassadors, announcement about alliance and partnership is effective to raise expectations from consumers. We should continue to do that. Uh, I think that's what I have uh, analyzed these days. This is all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Shin. I think it's good to learn from somebody's mistakes as well. And, uh, so, Dominique, could you please uh, okay. join us? Uh, yeah, thank you, Oksana. That you're way you're on the way back to Ukraine. Yeah, and have a good trip anyway. Thank you. Um, the fact is that today we uh, want to talk about Katana NFT, which will be delivered to the older shareholders of the Shinwa Vice Holdings. Uh, uh, today's shareholders meeting day that there's a deadline of the registration for the Katana uh, NFTs. The older uh, shareholders of uh, Shinwa Vice Holdings will be the owner of the Katana first. And then 
Um, we are planning to distribute the other katanas because this is whole the generative. It's one by one. It's a really independent, different, uh, the beautiful katana NFTs. And it should be in the market. Uh, probably in the, uh, the foundation is going to selling uh, the katana NFT, maybe 500 to 1,000 katanas per month. And then price, uh, we hope that to be set at below the $100. Um, it's going to be very affordable, and also it's a really uh, excited to tradable and in futures. And I, I'm I'm really looking forward to having Katana too. And and then um, as as um, JJ mentioned, um, the NFT land uh, utilizations. Um, yeah, that's uh, we now in the in the very weak uh, the crypto market that you know, somebody just now that started sell the NFT land the Edo Edo land just in the open sea market at a little lower price than that. Um, um, but uh, I hope uh, that I think you know this uh, tradable NFT land is also uh, will be very well supported in the future um, uh, uh, as we um, as we announce that in a pretty much interesting game style uh, land value up program um, and then uh, you will see that probably the very very soon um, and then you can see it. And then you can join the program that how you can just utilize and how you can just add in the value of the land's NFT in the future. Um, it, the, then, and the people are going to be very confident about land because the land value itself, you just think about the uh, Daimyo Koji's, uh, where, where it's the land, the areas of a Tokyo station and uh, uh, your actual stations and those the variable in the land NFTs it's going to be moving up as hope in the futures and then um we uh now the officially just uh, announced that Konishiki is ambassador that uh, the, uh Mr Konishiki and I hope that, that he can just will be a re- the super ambassador just in our in our eco eco ecosystem in the futures and and then um, we have a uh, every week that we have a the discussion with a set queen with the, with the 3D creators. Um, uh, they are actually creating very aggressively and 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 then just with high speed. And then they're just uh, having a lot of ideas about things. But we are you are quite actually uh, talking to them about the real way of avatars and also the 3D uh, space. Uh, how what kind of landscape? What kind of house does we have? We have we can see that in the space. So I we want to be real Edo periods landscape with a really fashionable, uh, fashionable avatars that the, we're working around. Uh, um, it's going to be very exciting. So and we will see that probably I think in the end of um, towards the end of this years. And um, and then um, we. Uh, uh, attending the Meta Week uh, in Dubai uh, from 11th of September to the 14th. And then uh, we are uh, 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 one of our person will be a key speaker just in the in the in the in the Meta Week. And then uh, the title should be that NFT mutations. So um, uh, uh, from uh, Edobus Foundation, just uh, the making some speech about the uh, uh, NFT mutation because they have a lot of uh, NFT, they're creating a lot of NFTs, but to push up the body of the NFT that we need a mutations. And then uh, we we would talk about you know, how we can do it and then uh, on a technical basis and also on the marketing basis as well. Um, and then um, if the people are really uh, interested in this, that you know, please just, uh, they're coming to the Dubai that, you know, the, uh, the listen to us, please. Okay, uh, that's all about about Airbus this week, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dominique, and thank you everybody for listening. I will, I will meet you next week. Bye.